Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Game. Welcome back to Great Personality. Oh, it's about me. Guardians, the game, with me as always. Well, not always. She's not with me all the time. But in this LP, she is the lovely Lauren. Hello, how are you doing all? Um, our main character, Sarah, has been invited by Mikey to go to a club or somewhere in the nightlife thing. Apparently, he asked her to go to some creepy alley. I think dark she... neighborhood with two men in the shadows. Maybe she's gonna get pimped out. I hope the so. The people chatted and talked loudly, laughing and gesturing. <laughs> Sound like English people? In wow, <laughs> I can use their own culture. Wait, so like if I go to England and I made someone laugh, that's what it's going to sound like? Yeah, like really big, obnoxious laughing. Uh, if you're mad about the comments and you're from Great Britain, please remember to check out Lauren's channel. It looked Hi. like everyone was waiting to get in. There will be a link to her channel in all these videos, which I forgot to mention in the other ones, but... It looked like <laughs> everyone was waiting to get in. Oh, he moved a little bit. Oh, I hope they're not having sex there. <laughs> It was nearly 11 p.m. and Mikey had let you know that he would be meeting you outside. What kind of date starts at 11 p.m.? The right kind of day. <laughs> oh. You hadn't seen him yet, so you leaned back against the outside wall near the entrance. You must have been there a little earlier than expected. As you waited for Mikey, several groups of people joined the line. It now extended halfway down the block. As you sat there, you looked around. You were grateful that you had chosen something stylish... As most of the people that were waiting in line with you looked as if they belonged on the set of a photo shoot. Oh dear. I guess I'm not stylish. Well, I know I'm not <laughs> the way I dress. But I'd be more like, where the fuck's my date? <laughs> yeah. I would be like that as well. As you were standing there, you heard a familiar voice call to you. Hey, uh, Sarah. Mikey walked up. <laughs> Apparently he mo moonwalked to you. <laughs> Ca Mikey mo casually moonwalked back to you, passing the line. He reached over and gave you a warm hug. Get uh, off me. Looks like we came on a good night. You like my sparkles shirt? Oh, I do. It sparkles. Sorry. <laughs> Seems like it takes us forever to get in there. I love his sash. It, does, it looks like a sash. Maybe it's just supposed to be the, sh the sweater design. But it looks like he's wearing a sash, like he's like on a Star Trek episode, or he's a Boy Scout uh, or something. Really? <laughs> oh no. I got this under control, babe. Mikey nodded to you and extended his arm, the thre uh, threading your arm through his. The two of you walked up to the front of the line. Surprised at how forward he was, you whispered at him. Shouldn't we wait like everyone else? He winked <laughs> and whispered back. That won't be necessary. The two of you moonwalked slowly up to the front of the line. Feeling a little overwhelmed, you clung to his arm, trying not to feel intimidated by the crowd of people around you. Ah, uh, Mikey! Uh, what's up, man? Someone reached out and slapped Mikey on the back. Hey, Malcolm! Mikey reached out and shook Malcolm's hand firmly. Oh, I like the name Malcolm. Uh, good to see you. He flashed Malcolm a huge smile. Huh? What, you, you're Macy has friends? I am. That's not because you shut. <laughs> a couple other people standing with Malcolm turned and murmured. Mama, mama, mama. Smiling in your direction. Oh, I hope I hope Mikey's not gay for your sake. Aww. The two of you reached the front of the line and Mikey excused himself. Let go of your arm and gave the bouncer a huge hug. Hey, Arjun, nice to see you. Arjun nodded and gave Mikey a nod, unroping the entrance and letting the two of you walk inside. The music thumped and bumped, and the room was hot! That just looks like some warehouse somewhere. But there's confetti, or shards of glass, one or the other. They're both apart. <laughs> shards of glass coming down from the ceiling. As you looked around, you saw gorgeous people leaning heavily on a mirrored bar, perfect smiles and impeccable hair. Oh, just glass. Is the advantage of mirrored bar is you can do coke off of that and not have to bring your own mirror? <laughs> the whole place pulsated, bump, 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 with the music and the people clustered together on the dance floor moving to the beat of the music. Beat off, you bitches. A lone DJ sat high above everyone else, like a king, a DJ king, one hand on his head up phones, and another swapping tracks, his laptop casting a glow on his features. You were impressed at how easy it was for Mikey to enter the club. In fact, you weren't sure how he did that. 
The two of you stopped at the bar and Mikey requested a drink for you. As you looked out over the sea of gorgeous people. Wait, what's the drink? I need to know the drink. <laughs> um, let's get her a Long Island iced tea because she's a long drink of delicious water. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're just in your pants, if you're creeped out, or a little of both. As you, you felt as if you were in a <laughs> movie. The whole thing felt very surreal. The glass tore your skin. In the low lighting, Mikey looked incredibly handsome. So, oh, in the normal lighting, he looks perfectly bad. If so, does he always keep you there? He's like, no, we can't leave. We can't leave. <laughs> it has to be dark. It's, it was hard to speak. The sound of the sound of the music drowning any possibility of prolonged conversation. So instead you smiled at him. See, I, I, you know I'm old because I'm at the age where it's like, I don't want to go to a club. It's too loud. I want to talk to people. <laughs> Sorry. And you know I'm young because I want to party. Uh, plus I have a hearing difficulty anyway, so I can never hear people at that stuff anyway. Taking this chance to really soak in the situation. The bartender came to you with your drinks. And you fall. Oh, sorry. He got <laughs> See that... the bartender as well. Is he everything? Apparently, he got that sweater straight out of the '90s. Judging by it. Yeah. And you followed Mikey as he led you over to a less crowded section of the swanky space. You come here often, Winky Face. He smiled at you, reading your lips. Uh, every now and then, you know, I like to come here as often as I can. My good buddy Hugo Black owns the place. I knew that guy in college. He partied all day, every day, but still managed to graduate at the head of the class. He shakes his head a little. Man, until the booty accident. Partied so much, his ass exploded. <laughs> you know, but it's no surprise he ended up owning something like this. Yeah. Anyway, we got our master's degrees in entrepreneurial business together. Master's degrees? You raised your eyebrow in surprise. Not bad. Mikey took a step towards you. How's your drink? How you... Sorry. How about you take a step back? <laughs> you hadn't had the chance to take a sip yet. You brought the glass to your lips. Mm, it smells of date rape. You smiled at him. It's great. It seemed like every other minute you were floored by Mikey's connections. His knowledge is everything. You found it incredibly hard to believe, but it was all here. You took another sip of your drink as the two of you looked out onto the dance floor. You had never been one to dance, but you uh, found watching other people dancing mesmerizing. You were usually the one to stand off to the side of the club, participating in uh, the most non-committal of ways when it came to clubbing. Mikey stepped to the side and uh, looked out at the dance floor with you. Leaning towards you, he spoke in your ears, tapping your shoulder with his, his playfully. Uh, you dance? Huh? Huh? No, 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 I'm gonna just chug down this drink then and dance. I dance then. You looked at your drink and ran your finger around the rim of the glass. Only when no one's looking. Uh, you can't be serious. You looked at. Oh, at, I you saw <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go. See, yeah. Um, uh, uh do you wanna dance with me? Wink. He was tapping his foot and swaying with the beat a little. You could tell he really, really wanted to dance. Feeling a bit sheepish. Yeah, you pulled your eyes away from the people on the dance floor. There was no use comparing your dancing skills to theirs. Come on. Me. Let's dance. Like you took an empty glass out of your hand, the empty glass out of your hand, and set it on a nearby table. He took you by the hand and led you out into the dance floor. No one else. And nowhere else would you have let someone talk you into dancing. But for some reason, Mikey had this pull. You felt yeah, yourself... Yeah, his arm. He literally dragged me by his arm. You felt yourself drawn to him because of his arm. And you had no idea why you were going, doing, doing the things you were. But just, you went with it. Yeah, look at us dancing. Shards of glass everywhere. Standing on the dance floor, Mikey moves slowly with the beat of the music. That's not really a slow beat. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know. His motions were fluid, like the fluid in his ball sacks. Feeling oh, self, yeah. <laughs> feeling self-conscious, you felt stiff. I bet he that he did too. Though you were trying to loosen up, you barely moved. 
Yeah, let me show you a couple of things. He got close. May I? He motioned towards you, hands open, as if he wanted to show you. He's... <laughs> um, go with it and see where this is going. No, 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 make a joke about dancing and move just out of his reach. <laughs> he was so close. He was so close to getting some. Oh. So, so close. It's not that easy, though, is it? You laugh a little bit, looking down at the floor. Hoping to dissuade him, you held your hands up. Get away from me. I don't think you know what you're getting into. I know what I want to get into. He smiled at you, extending a hand and threading his fingers slowly through yours. His hands were strong, and he slowly pulled you in closer. Somehow you were unable to pull yourself away. Mikey tilted his head and uh, motioning you closer. You looked into his eyes and stepped towards him. Placing a hand against your back, he pulled you in closer, the two of you swaying to the beat. Uh, looks like you know uh, exactly what you're doing. He was so, so motherfucking close. <laughs> you could feel the heat from his body. He's so damn hot. Mikey leaned in close, your chest nearly touching, your body's interlocked on the dance floor. You know exactly what you're doing, don't you? I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. <laughs> but whatever I was doing, it felt so right. Mikey ran his lips along your cheek, speaking breathlessly into your ear. Are you glad you came with me? <laughs> his voice was low and rough. You tilted your head away from him as his lips brushed against your neck. I am. The night was a blur between the drinks and the dancing. You felt lightheaded. Your inhibitions melted away and you found yourself caught up in the beat and the feeling of Mikey's body next to yours. You'd only met him a day ago, but you didn't care. He had you under his spell and you were fully willing to go along for the ride. He teased you staying so close, but just far enough. Mikey was fully aware of his sway, and he was using it to torment you in the most intense ways. You were no stranger to impulse, but the feelings you got when you were with him, yeah, were paralyzing. I literally can't move because of the drugs and the drink. <laughs> Your face flushed. He was magnetic. At last call, the two of you sat in the VIP section for a moment. Your heart had been racing the entire time, and you were caught up in this hazy, adrenaline-filled dream. Um, may I, uh, walk you home? Ever impressed? I nodded. Yep, yep, you nodded. How can he be so perfect? I don't think he's perfect. You should get to know him more. Should I? I don't think so. Outside of the club, the air was chilly. Mikey reached out and held your hand, his fingers intertwining with yours softly. You felt exhilarated. The cool air sobered you up, allowing you to realize that your night was about to end. You leaned gently against Mikey as he walked back to your apartment. Thank you for a wonderful time. He nodded at you, bowing his head slightly. Thank you for a wonderful time. In the last few steps before your apartment, you hesitated, stopping and turning towards Mikey. Looking up at him, you take a deep breath. Go on, kiss him. You might as well. Holding your breath, you look at him. Mikey gave you a slow, soft smile. Still holding onto his hand, you pulled him closer. Reaching up with your free hand and placing it on his cheek, he bent down, closing what? his eyes. As your lips touched, electricity shot through your body, like literally. He wrapped his other arm around you and pulled you in, pressing your Ru body your against the, his. I think you're Japanese all of a sudden. That must be all the time, you know. His lips lingered on yours. As you parted, he smiled. You felt the heat spread throughout your body, goosebumps rising on your skin. You hope that right now that he might be feeling it too. He smiled, watching you walk up the stairs. Man, that's a fun booty. I know. <laughs> As you slipped your key into the lock, Mikey called after you. Turning to Mikey, you said... Uh, Sarah! What? Or maybe what? he said it. I you that said, wrong. I think. <laughs> you turned to see that confident, broad smile. I have to know. Do you have herpes? I mean, do you really yes, want... Yes! Oh, every crap. kind! <laughs> Do you really want to help out with my project? He smiles deviously. 
Or were you just trying to get close to me in my crotch bulge? He pauses as you open your mouth in mock surprise. I, I, I mean, um, either way it worked. Mm. Yeah. Chapter five. Stumbling into your apartment, you threw your keys on the table and collapsed upon your bed. Still reeling from Mikey's touch, the feeling of being so close to him, you closed your eyes. Oh. Are you doing unspeakable things to yourself in front of the cat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. In, prin in principle, you hadn't asked him to come inside. It's a little much for the first date, isn't it? It is, isn't it? But entire, uh, the entirety of your body wished that you had... You took a quick shower, washing off what you could of tonight's experience, uh, and went to bed wistfully. Staring at the ceiling, all you could think about was Mikey's dong. I mean Mikey. And how impossibly difficult it would now be to work alongside a person like him. Kitty. Hello, Kitty. Aww, I think it's a kitty. The next morning, you woke with a headache. Oh. Hangover. Oh, okay. I thought you meant it was pills in the drink. <laughs> Night had been kind to you, but the morning was going to give you hell. You had successfully made your first night in the city something to remember, and now you'd have to find a way to keep up the momentum. Sitting down to breakfast, you held your head in your hand, reading what was left of yesterday's local newspaper. As you read somewhere along the what's hot section, is Mikey's dong hot? You found a picture of Mikey. Oh, he was in the what hot section. Yeah. How did I not see this before? Uh-oh, this could go terribly, terribly bad. The headline reads, Genius Entrepreneur Plans Incredible Revival of Nicolette Avenue. Thank God it wasn't the bad way. You read on. The article talked about Mikey's past as a corporate strategist. Ew! Corporate pig! Corporate pig! Oh, God. What? <laughs> we must overthrow the people! <laughs> Destroy the corporations, except for mine. Except for my corporation. Don't destroy mine. Talking about his big successes at his last Fortune 500 company, he left that job to pursue options that were more fulfilling. I think he wants to fulfill you. I sure does. You read on. They showed a picture of Mikey standing before a massive assembly of people. Another one of him cutting a ribbon in front of the zoo. The article praised him for his local agendas, like trying to get in your pants. He failed to last night. And his ability... He did get a kiss from you, though. Oh, yes. So far. So, so far. What? I would be like, I like a kiss. Hey, everybody, I got some face action. And his ability to pull off some of the city's most meaningful events. Interesting. Does she say that with, like, Mr. Burns' hand pose? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the bottom of the article was a photo of Mikey standing in what looked to be a very swanky loft. <gasps> Bewildered, you rubbed your eyes, blinking again at the article. How the heck did you find such a wiener? Winner, winner. <laughs> you could only hope that whatever happens next uh, would leave you in his good graces. You flipped the paper over as you finished the article and hopped in the shower. You might as well get to it. Wait, you showered last night. I'm going to shower again. I need to get the scrub off of me. If you were to lend your skills to any cause, it might as well be fulfilling. Fulfilling. <laughs> it would have been good if I hadn't snorted at the end. <laughs> Welcome to my sex hotline. <sighs> uh, we were excited to receive a text from Mikey requesting that you join him at the new board meeting for the Indie Shops Fair. The walk down to the designated meeting space was quick, and you were looking forward to having a little work to do. I think he wants to work you. I think so. I know what I mean. Through the whole endeavor, uh, though the whole endeavor was volunteer run, Mikey had told you that they had the best community leaders involved in the program. You'll be impressed. He had talked up the groups that were involved and promised that as soon as you were able to attend, they'd introduce you to some fantastic people. If these people were anything like Mikey, you were in for a real treat. Oh. Are you going to kiss them too? Are you going to kiss them too? I suppose so, if they're as good as him. <laughs> you entered with a large open room. The, uh, you entered a large open room. The way I said it, it sounded like I, you brought a large open room with you. <laughs> Look, it's in my backpack. I just take it out every now and then. Is it like, uh, what is it, like in Harry Potter where they have the tents and they go in there? Or... 
Yeah, it's just like that. Or what is it? The the TARDIS on that show with that doctor guy? Doctor, what's his name? The doctor. doctor. Who? It's the doctor. <laughs> Jeez, how many times? The headquarters looked really nice, decorated with a designer's touch. You know, that's one of the few times I've given you grief on here. I might regret because I have a lot of people who watch who are Doctor Who fans. They're gonna be like, "It's his name's not Doctor Who." You had heard that the space had been loaned to you by one of the city's most influential people. Is it me? Yeah. You found all this information quite interesting, and even more interesting that the community here really did seem to want to be involved. You think bees live here? Those look like honeycombs. I can't work out what they actually are, to be honest. I think giant bees, and this is... See, this could be a light outlet to yeah, light it. Yeah, it's a light, yeah. But I think right. it's actually giant bees, and they're English bees, so that's their tea bag. Why would they be a bee for real right now? Yeah. <laughs> Today it seemed like only a few people were gathered around, skirting the walls around the large tables. Mikey saw you enter and looked up from his conversation with one of the volunteers, excusing himself to come greet you. Wait, wasn't he talking to you earlier? He was, because he went some. Whoa. Wait, Whoa. fuck you! Isn't that what it means when you see like, <laughs> like that? Money, you. Money, you, like, bitch. You. He smiled at you. You what? had to wonder. <laughs> You had wondered if seeing him again this morning would have been a shock to your system, as if he would suddenly be something else, like a werewolf or a warg. As if you would be disappointed in the daylight. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> you were right. He's wearing the same sweater. I thought he was like, hmm. He doesn't wash. <laughs> but as he stood before you, there was no doubt about it. He was 100% exactly as you remembered him. Your heart jumped in your chest. That's probably bad. That's probably a medical condition. As he leaned forward and kissed your cheek. You blushed, blushed and instinctively looked around the room. No one else had noticed. Most people were still shuffling papers and looking intensely at the information contained inside. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Mikey had beckoned a tall woman with bleach blonde hair. Shock. Can I start that sentence over again? Sure. Mikey beckoned a tall woman with a bleach blonde shock of hair over. Ooh, you have competition. Oh, whoa. <laughs> she walked with a bit of a sway to her step. I like the red dress. She looks a bit sunburned, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. She looked confident. Whoa. She got up in your face. The woman extended her hand to you and took it, shaking it firmly. Uh, Sarah, I'd like you to meet Amelia. She's my partner for this project. Oh, oh, oh. She's handling oh. fundraising. I like to handle things. And I thought the two of you might be a good team. What? Mm -hmm. I didn't expect that he tried to pawn you off. Yeah. If you two will excuse me for a moment. Amelia, can you get Sarah up to speed? You watch Mikey walk off. As he did, you couldn't help but feel a little sad that the two of you weren't going to be working together. <gasps> You're not sure what you should have expected. But you guessed that you were here to do a job, not to repeat last night. Amelia smiled at you, eager to get to know you. She walked you over to a table on the far side of the room. The two of you sat down in front of a large, modern table. Ooh, let's read the agenda notes. Nick Lett Avenue. Indie shops there. Agenda notes. Cancellation of the board meeting next Tuesday to resume in one week. Strategy groups assigned for fundraising and marketing. Community events planning committee. Numbers from poll announced. Oh. That sounds boring. Well, that does, doesn't it? Yeah. She handed you a packet. Yay. Do you want to be Amelia? <clears throat> what am I going to do for her? Here are, the, uh, here are some of the details that we're going over today. The front cover sheet is today's gender. The front cover is today's agenda. The last several are some recap notes that I took the day after the latest board meeting. She pulled her chair a little closer and looked up at you. So, how'd you meet her? Uh, Mickey. You weren't sure what to say. Clearing your throat, you look over at him momentarily. He was standing over the same table talking with a couple of people. He had a big friendly smile on his face, as opposed to a big unfriendly smile. <laughs> people sure seem to like him. You turn towards Amelia. I actually met him yesterday when I was on about. 
I just moved here. He walked me home when it was raining. We got talking about what we were doing for the city. He was doing for the city, yeah. You neglected to tell her that you had gone out with him last night. But you figured that was an unnecessary detail. Ah. He's definitely a smooth talker. Mm. That guy can talk the pants off of anyone, anytime. What? You kept your mouth shut. That's how he got me to come in there. Is that what he does? Is he like, like seduces ladies to work on his charity products? Or... Like, hey, you can have some of the D if you know what I mean. <laughs> you shot her a look. I mean, talks me into joining forces. Is that like terminology for sex? Yeah. <laughs> but I always end up for a good challenge. Especially when it's got to do with the city. Born and raised here with a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of me. Relieved that you had misinterpreted her. I don't think you did. You sat quietly and refocused on the task at hand. So uh, how can I help you? Amelia shuffled through the papers one by one, telling you the details of where they were doing well with the fundraising and where they were falling short. You nodded along, noting all the important details. Amelia pointed at one note on the agenda. We're going to reschedule the next meeting. We had to prepare a couple of new prints before we go in the front of the board again. Right. Now the teams are trying to come up with some innovative fundraising techniques, and now you and I are tasked with a plan that involves speaking with the donors. She smiles at you wickedly, like the devil! Mikey gave us the blood. Big job. <laughs> Wow. You smiled at her and let out your breath. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, dear, man. Let's get to it. The day passed and you and Amelia brainstormed furiously. You knew that the clock was ticking and you were fairly confident that between the both of you, you could come up with some innovative ways of gathering funds. You had pride in your analytical thinking and back in Sarah, uh, you had been one... What? And back uh in Sarah... Back in London, you had been one of the only people your job, I think. Oh, I got it. So they accidentally put, like, the wrong... Yeah. Job. I was going to say, back when you were inside yourself? That's inappropriate. <laughs> you had been one of the only people at your job to challenge new concepts with radical ideas. You were very happy to participate in any discussion that led you down the path of problem solving. And though some people may have called you eccentric, you were always right oh, and knew it. Yes, I was. Excellent. Yeah, that's what you tell me. I do. Right. Okay. We finally have a plan. What's your schedule uh, over the next couple of days? We're going to need some extra, you know, serious excavation time. Excusion time? You mm -hmm. murder people? You look at your calendar. I do. Oh, I'm free uh, to work tonight because I'm not doing anything anymore. I should know. I have a few some concepts tomorrow morning. Amelia looked at you in astonishment. Are you sure about that? I. Uh... <laughs> I started removed. I'm sorry. It's my bad. I, I started to talk over your line, so. Ah, oh, that's all right then. I'm positive. We need this quickly, right? She nodded her head. We certainly do. In that case, I want it. Amelia patted you on the back. I. I bet your apartment working on my share as well. Here's my number. Give this. Call me if you need anything. I'll check in on you. You nodded, excited to get business. To business. You shook Amelia's hand firmly. Got it. You watched her walk away. The two of you had some solid concepts, you just wanted to fine-tune them a bit. Amelia had left it up to you to figure out just how to implement everything, and it encouraged you to do what was best. Happy to oblige, you jotted down a few more notes. Time passed, and you'd forgotten to look up around you. You lifted your head from your desk, realizing that almost everyone had left the office. You scanned the room for Mikey, excited to tell him what you were up to. You knew that he would be thrilled when he found out how much you were willing to contribute to the cause. Your eyes scanned each table. Uh-oh. Asshole! Where is he? 
Did he leave? He was nowhere to be found. Okay. I, I think this is where we're going to have to end this episode. Next episode, I guess we're going to have to try and find out if Mikey is here or if he just romances women to make him work on charity projects. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. I stopped. I actually stopped lost in thought, but when you can't see me on cam, that doesn't help. Uh, thanks yeah. for watching, everybody, and thanks for Lauren for joining me. If you would like to see her videos, there should be a link in the description. Bye. Bye.